Hello and welcome to the 2010 Q Masters 8 Ball Open Championship. My name is Kim Crest and joining me in the commentary booth is Travis. Hello Travis. Hello Kim. It's, um, we've got a cracker, cracker Jack final here with um, two, of, two of Australia's best players. They've uh, made, it to the t- made it to the final and uh, should, be, should be a good match. I think you're right there mate. Probably the two best players in the field are in the final tonight. Settle down, Kim. <laughs> uh, it's been a fantastic tournament. I've been to a few tournaments. This is very, very well run. Uh, tournament organisers are uh, Carla Groombridge and Travis Martin. Done an excellent job, Travis. Certainly have the, um, the competitions run very smoothly. The uh, the players, the the players have, have been excellent. There's been no no problems at all. The, the, the draws just run very smoothly, and, and credit credit to uh, to Carla and Travis for a great job they've done. And as you say, there really hasn't been any problems. I mean, all the players I really haven't met many of these players, but everyone's been really nice to me. I'm not too good with the rules. Everyone's been happy to help me out. Um, I think there are 85 runners, which is fantastic. Five thousand dollars prize money. Yeah, well, that's right. The most of them have been nice to you. Because I've, I've been telling everyone you're a cop. <laughs> so um, they, they have been behaving themselves. We're, Thanks um, for that, mate. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, surprised to not see you in the final. Well, not not more than me. I'm I'm very disappointed. But I will, Adam Adam List knocked me off in the round of 16, and he uh, he played very well. And uh, what was know, the frame score? It was four two. Four two. Yeah. No, he played very well, deserved to go through, and he was unlucky not to, to make the final. I think he played for New South, he got picked for the New South Wales team, is that right? Is that um, Adam List? Yeah. No, Adam List is a, a true blue Queenslander. Oh, and, yeah. uh, Well, we're not going to hold that against him, but he, mani- he managed to get a few frames off me, and he played very well. But, um, no, it's been, a, it's, been a, a, it's been a tough competition, and... It's 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 been good to, s- to have two of the top players make the final, which is, makes it a good spectacle for the, for everyone here to watch. Yeah, I think this is going to be awesome. Um, just watching the first frame now, we're a little bit sloppy from John Rusty Wheeler initially. He's uh, he's had opportunity earlier to to dominate, but he's got himself in a little bit of a hole. Is that is that red go? You reckon? I think you can see half a pocket, and that's all Rusty needs most of the time. It's a very, very sharp potter. Well, the way he's played that, it, it seems that it wasn't quite on, so he's, he's laid it up and half covered the pocket. So we, we can expect a bit of, bit of dirty stuff from Pete now. Yeah. <coughs> Definitely going to be a tactical battle. Yeah, Rusty's in a world of trouble here. Being a nine ball player, I'm not, I'm not too down with the, uh, the actual tactics of this. Is it actually possible for Rusty to win this frame? Well, he's got the pocket covered, but he's only, he's only got it half covered, which means Peter can manoeuvre his balls around. And basically decide when the game's going to move to the next level. So Rusty's just got to keep pushing balls around and try and make them as safe as he can because uh, he's got no access to that red at all. So. Okay, he's got he's got one of his balls into position. Okay, I'm assuming Russ is just going to try and move it. Absolutely, it's uh, Pete's going to try and get a ball down there so we can he can get it under that red because get it under that red and it'll chip out and open the pocket up for him. So, uh, it, it's Pete's frame to lose here. Rusty's just got to hang in there and and try and take any opportunity that he can if Pete lets him back in it. Would you say these players are on a par as far as national championships are concerned? I mean, who's, who's won the most out of those two? 
Rusty Rusty won the Australian Singles Championship in Melbourne in uh, 2008. I think I'm right. It was a couple of years ago. And uh, Peter Watt goes back, way back to 1993 when he he lost a, a singles final to Avelina de Freitas 5-4 in Darwin. Um, on that occasion, Peter Watt was 4-0 in front. Oh, really? And uh, went in off the black at, so, at 4-0 up. And so for a few seconds, he was the 93 Australian champion. But <laughs> Avelino went on to win the next four frames and, and claim the 93 singles title. But if you're talking players, best players in Australia, never to win an Australian title, Peter Watt would definitely be on everybody's list. Right. But I'm assuming he's won all the major tournaments, at least in this part of the country. Like, like does he get down to Adelaide for he, Alex Empire? No, he, he's, he's not a big traveller. Right. He's not a big traveller, Pete. He um, generally only travels locally for comps or in and around Gold Coast, Brisbane, anything interstate, unless it's a national championship, he, he prefers to leave him alone. I'm assuming he's represented Australia. He's been selected for Australia on, on, a, on a few occasions. And uh, to my knowledge, I don't think he's travelled. As I said, he's, he's not a great <laughs> he's not a great believer in, in, in airline travel. <laughs> so, um, but well, it can be quite dangerous. To us. Well, <laughs> but no, definitely, definitely a great. But Peter, he has won he has won the Australian doubles championship on. I'm going to take a stab on two occasions. Once in 1994, he won that with he won that with Mick Macri. Mick Macri. Mm-hmm. He's not related to Sam Macri, is he? Yeah, they are. They're related. Right. Um, There's a name I haven't heard for a long time. Yeah, Mick. Mick. Uh, Mick and Pete won the '94 Australian Doubles Championship, beating a couple of great um, up-and-coming players from the Northern Territory by the names of Shane Griffin and Travis Crawley. So you do go around and try to see what state I, haven't you played for? I was there when they when they invented the wheel. <laughs> they invented the ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, Pete's been around a long time and very well respected player. I, I actually met him for the first time in this tournament and had a few chats to him. He's a really nice bloke. Oh, certainly is he. Very personal. Happy to share knowledge and information. Yeah, yeah, you definitely got to go a long way to find find a nicer guy. Oh, there he is. He's got his opening. He has. He's, he's the reds out. But as, as we can see throughout the last five minutes or so, um, Rusty's been tying everything up. He's been tying everything up in anticipation of, of that shot. So even though with the reds out, there's still a bit of work for Pete to do. Ooh, I don't think he's actually got him there, Travis. Still, I think Rusty's really got the same problem, doesn't he? As long as that black's in there. Well, if, if he can get a crack at this, if he can get it back over that ho- that hole where it was, it would be great. Well, that's a great hit. So we're back to where we were. A few moments ago, Pete could just push balls around again and uh, wait until he gets another opportunity at this red. He's going to try and promote this a bit closer to the pocket. Well, that's a great shot. That's pretty much in the pocket now, isn't it? That's that was a great hit. Yeah, it's, that may force Pete into. Uh, Trying to get this out immediately. I've heard of these types of frames actually having a draw where they do a re rack. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Where each player will just won't play play their ball. I've been at yeah the it's called a stalemate situation that occurs when you've got the um, 
the eight ball hanging over the pocket and a, a yellow and a red uh, in front of it actually both of them touching the black thus if one of the balls was to be touched the the black had quite obviously drop in so there's really no desire for any player to or either player to have a crack at their ball so once each player shoots away three times the, the umpire declares a, a stalemate and they re-rack the balls. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the, the American eight ball nine ball rule of 3,000 low loss of frame. Do you think that would ever be applied to this game? Yes. From a TV perspective? No, I believe, I believe that rule is, is very close into coming in into right. this injury's game. We've just got to wait for pigs to fly and hell to freeze over. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll be rushed straight in those rules. I'm assuming... I'm assuming from gravity or statement you disagree or you just don't think it would ever happen? No, nah, it'll never happen. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a separate game and if players, if players have got an option to play, to play whichever discipline they, they choose and a lot of players prefer that way. It's a little more open and attacking. Well, well I'm, I'm assuming that it's, it's relevant to, you know, because... In any game when you want to get on TV, you've got, to, you've got to get sponsorship, which means you've got to create a set of rules that's, that's good for a spectator. So I'm assuming that that rule exists from a spectator point of view. Yeah, the... It but I guess the argument would be that people that love this game actually love the fact that, that you can possibly get a stalemate, that two players can be that good, that it will come to the point where neither of them can actually hit a ball. Well, well that's right. It's just, a, it's just a part of this game, and it's, it's what makes this game great. Um, obviously, the, the nine ball and, and the one shot eight ball rules is, uh, all come out of America um, to, to, speed up, to speed up pool, make it, put it on TV, and yeah. you know, like anything in America, everything's fast and furious <laughs> and, and big. So it's, um, oh, that's, oh, oh he's, he's had a dip at that. <laughs> now he's 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 tried a very a very outrageous shot, which obviously he's, he believes his his options are running out fast. So he's, he's he's had a crack at a very low percentage shot. It hasn't worked out, but he's. Fortunately, push Pete's yellow next to the black, which again sort of slows his frame down a bit. Very unexpected style of game. This one with these two players, they're generally quite attacking and fast. And yeah, it's actually a crack of a frame to have first off. Well, it's a tactical battle. I think we're all expecting someone to just go out. Well, both, both players are, are very well, very well versed on the how-tos when it comes to this type, type of play, this type of game. They, um, really at the moment, I think it's probably a flip of the coin to tell you the truth. Well, that's just freed up the pocket. Well, I guess he doesn't really want to move that black yet, does he? Now, we, we, we could see a very attacking shot here from Rusty now. I think he's going to have a big dip at this. Oh, that's a good dig into it. Oh, that's a yeah. great hit. He was managed to to turn those two balls around, which was which was a very good shot. And I'm assuming none of none of that is speculative. Rusty pretty much knows exactly how the balls are going to react based on how he hits them and how they're sitting. Oh, definitely. He, that's obviously what he was trying to do. Just, manu just get them to change place, and he he done that nice. Peach just played a nice shot. He, but obviously his yellow still still has some sort of claim over that pocket. I think we're getting to the end of this frame very quickly. 
Yeah. Ooh, I guess it's gonna hurt. Yeah, that's that's frame from there. Peter what won't make any mistakes from here on in. Are you, are you happy with the addition of the new heavy white? New heavy spotted white? Have the players had to deal with too, uh, much of a change? Well to tell you the truth it was it was uh it was all different when it come in, it was the spotted white, but to tell you the truth, once you're out there and playing, you, you don't even notice it, don't even notice the spots. And there we have it, Peter takes the first frame. Good break there from Rusty, very attacking break. And I'd like to introduce into the commentary area Young Queensland sensation Jessica Woods. Hey, how are you? Welcome, Jess. That's a good first frame, isn't it? Yeah. Very good first frame, and both players had a claim over it. And Pete was good enough to get the get the uh, nose in front at the end there. Rusty's got an opportunity here to. To uh, take this frame straight back. <laughs> well, he's having a crack at this. This is not many players in Australia can do what this man can do. That's that's the that's the type of game he plays. It's he he can do some absolutely amazing things, and it's, it's an absolute pleasure to watch this guy. And unfortunately for him, there he's 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 landed fat behind that black, and I think he's going to try and pull off a shot in the middle pocket here. It's about all he's got. But very good. He's very, done very well to, to uh, rein himself in there. On some occasions, he would have had a he would have had a, a shot for the middle sh middle pocket there. So Jess, how did you go in this tournament? I understand you uh, you uh, saddled up and had a go. Yeah, I made the top 64. Lost to Brad Janky in the first round. That's okay. Are you happy with your form or? Yeah, I played. Didn't play too bad. I played a ride in a rapid charge, you got to the third round. Brad, Brad Jenkins is a solid player. Certainly is. For many years. Been around a long time, Brad, yeah. he, he knows the ins and outs. Made a few state teams on the way. Certainly. <laughs> Rusty's in a bit of trouble here. What he should have got there. Yeah, I think there's not much danger in, in Pete having a go at this because the red, although it's near the pocket, it's it's uh, hard against the cushion there and quite safe. So Pete has fairly mu pretty much got a free crack at this. Not the best shot there, a little bit out of position. Yeah, he's back in it. Made that shot look easier than it was. Yeah, sometimes when all the balls are easy, it, it, your brain goes to sleep and it, you get yourself out of position and you kick yourself. But Pete's got back into this nicely and shouldn't have too much problem with these last three balls.
Here's a little drop-in shot into the middle. Straight black. Should be 2-0 up in a matter of seconds. Ooh, he's caught the front of that middle jaw, but she's still dropped in. Wow. <laughs> I, I've, I've put the kiss of death on him. Commentator's curse. That's just unbelievable. Two of Australia's best players have missed. Well, Jess, there must be some pressure out there. We've just witnessed two of Australia's best players miss two of the easiest blacks you'll ever see. Now Pete's got himself in a good position here, he's um, this frame could be over in, a, in less than a minute. Well, I've done it again. I think he wanted to run for a bit more for that to get on this yellow on the rail. Yeah, he's uh, maybe, I don't know, he's a little bit of a brain explosion. He's, Oh, check that pocket. That's the wrong size pocket. That's that, that's just unbelievable. A good opportunity to go three 0 up for, for Peter Watt and. I think that pocket's probably still on his mind from the last frame, but he's, he's got rusty on the on the back, but he's a little bit rattled, I believe. Any final this Jess? Yeah, didn't expect these two players to miss so many balls. Playing a lot of tactics. Yeah, Rusty's uh, Rusty's playing very defensive. He's uh, it's certainly not his um, his game. His natural game. Yeah. He's <laughs> that was a good shot. Great hit by Pete. Gives him an opportunity to go to a 3-0 lead here. Yeah, yeah. Couple of drop-in yellows and the, the black should go in the middle quite easily. He's got a big red there to come off if he wishes to. Straight on the black in the middle, a little bit of a bridge over the red, but shouldn't be too much problem. Well, it's... Uh Welcome, Kim, back into the thank you. commentary thank you, box. Jess. Yeah, thank you, Jess. 
Job well done. I think she's got a big future. Oh, she's an excellent pool player. So, what's the frame score here? Did Rusty... 3 nil to, three nil to uh, Peter White. Mm. Unexpected? Not unexpected. Um, both, both very attacking players with um, plenty of weapons, but um, Rust, the way the matches have been going, it's certainly not uh, the way Rusty would have liked. With what you'd call sticky frames, they just things just aren't there, and he's having to work very hard for the things he is he is getting. I'm assuming Rusty actually favours open style of play. Oh, definitely. If uh, he, he can pot all day long and without any problems at all, and he just he loves the open style play and the attacking attacking nature that, he, that he's got. Um, as we can see now, Peter Peter's three nil up. You know, and uh, Rusty's. Uh, you know, it's, it's harder to play open open pool and attacking pool when you know the scoreboard's against you. He's, I'm sure he'll still try to. He has got out of come back from here before. I'm oh, he's, he's got out of big problems before. <laughs> he has. He, he, against you? It sounds like no, against you. No, when I got my foot on his throat, I don't let it off, mate. <laughs> so, um, no, he's. In the, the Australian title that he won, he was actually he was actually dead and buried against uh, South Australian Mick Delahunty. And uh, oh, Mick Delahunty, yeah. really really nice guy, Mick Delahunty. Mate, another another one of those guys that you uh, you wouldn't find a nicer guy. He's, he's just a magnificent guy and. A lot of people were hoping he'd, he'd get through that. That was in the semi-final, and a lot of people were hoping he'd get through because he's been around a long time, Mick, and never actually won an Australian final. And uh, Rusty managed to to come back from about 85 behind to to, to grab an unlikely win against Mick. Eight five down, race to nine. It was it was. To say the truth, I can't remember the score line, but he was a long, long way behind. Mick didn't miss a ball for about an hour. Pete, Pete's trying for an unlikely or an unlikely pot out here, but. Scoreboard's in his favour and he's looks like he's gonna have a go at this. Well I'm gonna say that, that could be a turning point. Seemed to get a bit lazy on that last round right there. Yeah, because um Good shot from Rusty. <laughs> I suspect if Pete doesn't play a good shot here, it'll, it'll be his last shot in this frame. Because all the balls are sitting nice for Rusty. Fantastic venue. Certainly is Q Masters here in Brisbane, just next to uh, Suncorp Stadium. Is uh, has put on a put on a great weekend. Tables have been excellent. It's, it's really good when a venue actually supports the game. I know I've, uh, I'm involved in organising the sport in New South Wales, and we actually have to pay the venue for the day. Yes, well, <laughs> which obviously comes out of the price. Now. Yeah, two two very different states, and uh, the rents are considerable in Sydney, though. Yes. Yeah. 
a bit stiff there for Rusty. He's, uh, when things aren't going your way, they they certainly don't go your way. You block the middle pocket there. Well, he's out of shape again. He's in a world of trouble here. Even though he's at the table and he's in control, he's. This is a very important, very important shot. Well, he's going to have to try and take this off the red. I haven't actually seen Rusty play that much. Would he normally be a lot tighter than this? He would Do you think he's off his game? Well, he's, he's definitely not on his game. He's, um, I don't think Pete's allowed him to be on his game. Right. But um, just looking at the match so far, the, he really hasn't had a he hasn't had the balls go his way at the moment, and um, Pete's taken his opportunities and. That's why he's three, almost four nil up. Gonna have to kiss this black, isn't he? Here's a chance. Well, looks like this should run up inside that yellow. Big opportunity miss there from Peter. Uncharacteristic miss. It was a tough shot. It was, but it should have done a lot better. At least set it over the hole on that occasion. I think Pete's lost a big opportunity to go 4-0 up. As, as you said earlier, turning point. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's got a ball. <laughs> well, Peter will be pretty happy with getting that last, that red drop. 3-1, uh, he's really probably not going to be, he's going to be a little bit rattled after that last frame. As you said, Travis, he's really, he's really let Rusty off the hook there. Being 4-0 being up, race to 7, totally different story. Well... Amazing how this game turns. Russell's got uh, Russell's got two shots now on the red balls. Thank your pardon. It's an open table. It's an open table. That one slipped under. So yeah, Russell's got two shots. He's now on yellows. And a very good opportunity to. Uh, Pull another frame back. So you did, did he play for that cannon? I think he was a little bit tricky in here. He can afford to waste a shot and, and promote promote these balls and put them in a better position. Right. Well. You can't be too happy with that shot. He's, he's still a good chance to, to go out in this frame. He's, he's certainly not making it easy for himself. Well, I'm assuming that yellow does go into the corner pocket. No, I don't think it does. Well, the way he's played that, you, I think you're right, Ken. Well, it's over, Casey. For Rusty's sake. He's in some trouble if it doesn't. Okay, it yeah, must have just been off. No, actually, from, from the way he's reacting, that I think he had a full look at that pocket. I prefer to think that I was right and it didn't go. <laughs> Is it conceivable to swerve that, that white ball? 
around the red. Is that a shot that would get played in this game? It, it would. It does get played in this game. Um, in this instance, though, you, there's, uh, I don't think he'd do it. This is a dangerous shot. He's, uh, he's, he's tried to get that black over the hole to uh, tie up a red. And he hasn't quite hasn't quite done put it over the hole, but we'll see what Pete can do with two shots here. Well, he, he really wanted that to go in. He's, he's probably going to want to tactically. What do you think his options are here? Oh, he's, he's got a. He's got a. Reckon you try to go out? No, I don't think he'll go out from here. I think he's, he's got to pull a snooker or cover this black with this red. Um, he really does not want this to drop in. Uh, Rusty's going to try and put this back over the pocket. I think he's played a good shot there, Kim. So. This is that stalemate situation that we alluded to earlier when, when you've got a ball touching the black over the pocket. I mean, depending on what, ha what, what happens, obviously, in the next couple of shots. But yeah, no, the, the only thing that's missing from this is uh, they need the yellow up there as well, hard against the black, and then yeah. obviously it's it's very, very sticky. And you wouldn't want to attempt a shot at it. No, we didn't want that to go in, Kim. We just wanted to leave that over the middle and leave uh, leave Rusty a snooker. This is this is Rusty's frame to lose Rusty's, from here. Rusty's in the driver's seat. Yeah. That's a good shot. I might see this other red get pushed over to the black. No, maybe not. Well, that's a very good shot. In your coaching clinics that you have for your juniors for this game, this would be a major part of learning the game, the tactical battle? Certainly is. The, uh, with the tactics, it's very hard to teach tactics. The, the best way to learn tactics is to be out playing the out playing, playing good players, getting into these situations and you're going to lose a lot of frames, learning how to, how to best tackle these situations but um, you know, there's really no substitute for competition, um, tournament play. Oh, he's pulled off a magic shot there. Absolutely beautiful shot. Do we use a cushion here or double kiss it? How did that not drop, Travis? What actually happens in this situation? Well, the black ball gets put back on the table. That's because Peter already addressed the table? Yes, I think... Um, in that situation... Is that a bit of sportsmanship there, or...? No, look, in that situation, I, I've got to be honest, if that was me, the player's got 10, 10 seconds to leave, leave the table. Knowing that it was hanging so perilously over that pocket, you wouldn't have budged. I would have, I would have held my ten seconds at the table and and uh, given myself every opportunity. But uh, I think I had that at eleven seconds, Joe. I had it at eight. Okay. But um, no, it's. But you know, it's. It's let Pete back in now. It's. it's uh, again, the match swings. Pete's probably, Pete's probably gone into favouritism in this match. Pete's gone into favouritism. Excuse my ignorance, I cannot see how people in this frame. Well, I guess, okay, he's got two shots. If the white is positioned in the right place, I guess you can get that red out. That's that's what you're leading to, isn't it? Well, the other three reds on the table are quite easy to, to pot with a single shot. And he's, uh, the red that's near the black, you can waste two shots and get it out. So it's Rusty's job just to make sure that 
anyway he hits that red, he's going to pop the black. Well, he's, he's tried to nudge it as close as he can there. Obviously, the black is very, very close to the pocket and and will drop if someone walks, walks past it with heavy feet. So it's Pete's job now to work these other three balls and best get his position to uh, get this red out with two shots. I think in this situation I'd much rather... I'd much rather be on reds. Black seems to be going down fairly regularly. <laughs> Can't say we've ever seen this yes. before. <laughs> I think Pete will try and get on the onto it now. Important shot here. Well, played that well. Or he's got a bit unlucky. No, he's got a bit unlucky. He's, uh, he certainly would have liked it to be in a, a potable position. I'm looking at the cross double here. Definitely the shot. It's a shot if it goes in, he wins the frame. The other one's right over the middle for him. Fantastic shot, as you said, Travis. Game winner. Certainly was, and that's now 4-1 to... Uh, well, we've already seen him miss the black over the bag, and it's a bit early with that call. <laughs> and there it is. That's an excellent break there from Rusty. <laughs> Last frame, another tactical battle. I hate to sit, say it too early, but I'm looking at Rusty going out here. He's actually got a good angle off this yellow to break those two out. Well, unfortunately, we were, ex we were expecting Travis Martin in the commentary booth, but um, apparently ha he's had a bit of an altercation with a bottle of Heineken and could struggle a bit. So we're going to let him off. But he has done a fantastic job this weekend organising this tournament. And I'm sure there's a lot of gratitude from all the players here. Excellent shot by Rusty, but that's, that's some shocking light to end up there. Yeah, I think if he can roll this in the middle, he's, he's still sitting all right. Tough angle there. Can he stun that out? Yeah, he can stun it. He's going to do a bit of work with the white, which, you know, he's obviously creates a little bit extra, uh, lower percentage on the shot, but he does have to force this in and... Uh, he doesn't have to get out that far, but he's still got a, it's, it's an awkward shot to do, but he's certainly got all the, all the weapons rusty. There's been, a, there's been a bit of talk this weekend about the tables being buckets. For those viewers who don't understand that, they're just it's about the, the pocket size and how much force you can hit a ball in with. Would you agree with that? I mean, I have played at Fast Eddies in Melbourne where you can run a ball down the rail and it won't drop. Yeah, there is a... Oh. Is there, is there a, a standard, like if you play an Australian national title, is there a specific oh, standard yeah. for a pocket size? It certainly is. That It does get technical. Good job by Rusty. It does get technical with millimetres and inches and angles and something of, I haven't bothered to wrap my mind around, but there is certainly a, a template they use and with a, a certain uh, percentage of variance that's allowed, but... 
Um, these these tables pockets, they're, they're probably you wouldn't call them tight. You would you would call them generous. But um, as you can see in the final, a little of that black ball in the second frame. It's, uh, they jawed a couple of times, and so they still got to do a bit of work to get them in. I'm, I'm guessing that yellow's not on. Possibly, he might be able to swerve around. That's a great hit. They it swerved w- around. That. It was not on. Uh, Fantastic you, shot. As you can see, by the dots on the white, he has swerved around the black. I don't think he can believe he's missed that. Well, without being too critical, he didn't deserve to go in because the way he played it was very negative. He should have just belted it in. Great shot, Pete's still got a few problems here though. Yeah, he's got a bit of work to do. Um, I mean, he'd really like to use the two balls that are frozen to get this snooker. Run, he runs the risk of actually leaving him the double though, if he gets it wrong. Yeah, he, he certainly wants to not let Rusty back into this match. He's played that pretty well, Charlie. Yeah, he played it very well. Rusty's in a world of trouble. He's, he's going to have to start. He's going to have to pull off a magic shot here, which he has done many Just times. Going to pot this, he? Oh, he's missed it by 100 miles. Bit of accidental side, looked like. Lifted his head. He, he's he's a shattered man at the moment. He, he, he's probably wondering how he's going to get back into this. Landed a bit straight on that. He does have the latitude for two shots there. Yeah, he's got the option to, to set it up first shot if he's had his eyes and then and just pop out for an easy second ball. So tactically that's the shot, set this ball up, using all two shots. All depends on how you feel. Run the one down. He's going to need the second shot. No, not if this sails in. As you said, hit him confidently. Yeah. We've got Peter breaking at 5-1. He's come up dry. Rusty's going to be stinging to go out here. Absolutely, Absolutely. stinging. Come up dry. Is that, a, is that an American pool uh, terminology? What, what is the two-shot terminology? Come up dry in two-shot means you, you, you've run out of beer or something. <laughs> So if you don't get a ball for break, is there a turn for it? Surely there's a turn for it. Well, oh, you put me on the spot. I, I'm <laughs> well, come up dry. I can think of a few expletives that may cross your mind at this point. Well, Rusty should really put out here. Be timing the ball quite well, Rusty. Well, this point out for him on on any day ending in DAY is just foregone conclusion. Absolute foregone conclusion. This guy just does not miss these pot outs, and he'd be hoping to get this one un- under his belt and and get on with his final. A nice bit of angle there. Yeah. yeah, for the black in the middle. Be 
do any better than that. Yeah, the old, the old blood nut's starting to uh, sweat up a bit. He'd be, he'd be pretty happy with himself after that last frame. It's certainly one he needed to do. Big confidence booster. You seem, you seem relaxing a bit after that. Yeah, um, it's just what he does. It, it just doesn't, you know, happens that often. It's, it's expected from him. So it's, the score line for him at the moment is probably disappointing. But he's, he'd be hoping to get an opportunity in this frame to, to continue his momentum. Is uh, Rusty a specialist two-shot player? Does he play American nine ball? Does he play snooker? Does he come from a junior snooker background? He, um, he seems to be quite a good cueist. Very good cueist. He um, he doesn't doesn't come from any recognised junior background. He's he probably kicked around the pubs and clubs as a young fellow, but he he started playing top level sort of after after he was a senior and. Uh, he does. He's a very good all-round player with snooker, nine ball, and the two-shot eight ball. Uh, I believe he has won nine ball title in Queensland. Yeah. It's sort of like the Sean Bud of Queensland, as we call Ben Ben Newton to Sean Bud of Victoria. Well, Sean Sean Bud is uh, absolute freak. He is an absolute freak and uh, very well respected boy. A lot of players throughout Australia and, and around the world. He's, he certainly made his mark in all disciplines of the game. Well, Pete's done well here. Rolling this middle. Any problem with the in-off in the other middle pocket with a kiss on that yellow? Oh, there would be if he plays it at pace, but I don't think he needs to. Just to run it in, and she's uh, all over. All right, 6-2, as we'd say, 9-ball. Pete is on the hill. Oh, he's done, a, he's done a rusty. On the hill, eh? What? Okay, come on, what's the terminology of two-shot when, you, when you're on your... Well, when you've got one frame to win? In this instance, it, it's 6-2. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe it's a, an old military term being that if you're on the hill attacking someone who's below you, you pretty much you've won the battle. You have the ascendancy. Uh, so you have the higher ground. Yeah. Can't, can you see Rusty not getting out here though? I know he's got a little bit of a problem with that black. I'm sure he's going to move it pretty much right now. He could be right. Maybe it goes. Maybe it goes, Kim. Goes in the top? Oh, actually, you're probably right. Just goes in the corner here. Well, he's well, that, that was a confident shot. Yeah, his attitude's changing. He's you think he's going to start throwing a bit of caution to the wind? Okay, Rusty pretty much needs a good break here. Oh, he's going to be happy with that. Very happy. Rusty's away here. That was a very good break for him. And uh, at the risk of cursing him again. In a matter of seconds, we're, we're going to see a 6-4 scoreline. And doesn't seem to be the type of fellow that lacks confidence. But, uh, and yet, we've seen a big change in his approach in the last couple of frames. Oh, he, he knows... He knows that it, it obviously it's only one frame and he, and he loses, but this is his game. So just do it, guys. Oh, it's absolutely. He's just, he's just going to have a red hot crack. He knows any miss now, any mistake, it's all over, so there's no use worrying about it. See any problems with this frame, Travis? He just, just needs to get back into position. Bad shot there. I've cursed him. <laughs> so he's just expecting to hit that yellow a little bit thinner and come back down the table, I'm assuming. Yeah. As you say, they kind of pots him from anywhere. Ooh, a bit lucky with the leave. Could have been a lot worse for him. Oh, 
Well, he's, uh, he's gifted Pete an opportunity here. He, he really should have been shut out of this frame. And 6-4 and certainly would have been a lot more attractive for Rusty. I know you yourself been in, in a lot of finals, both both national tournaments and money tournaments. Is there a certain psychology that you like to adopt for a final? Well, certainly is. Obviously, you, you, finals are very hard to get into, especially at national level. And when you get there, you've obviously done a lot of hard work to get there. And so uh, state of mind would just be a product of that experience. I mean, I know you know when they when you hear them talk about tennis players, they sort of don't like to peak too early in the tournament. Well, you yeah, look, I won won two Australian titles, and in both occasions, I certainly didn't peak. I didn't peak until uh, probably two thirds of the way through the tournament. I you like to have a little bit of luck early and, and get into get into the tournament and. I find once I'm in, you know, deep inside a tournament, getting into the latter rounds, it's I really the confidence really starts to grow because I obviously the races get longer and I, I feel a lot more confident in my ability to to, to beat players over longer races. So yeah, but um, certainly preparing for a final, you there's no there's it's well it's a final, isn't it? There's, there's no second chances, and you got to take every opportunity you get. Have you got any advice for for some of the young for some of the juniors out there that maybe haven't reached a final yet, having a bit of trouble with the, maybe the pressure, maybe maintaining their concentration, even though they feel like they've got the skills? Well, the um, it all comes with experience and playing, and I certainly I certainly didn't start making finals when I started. I um, you lose a lot of games before you. Uh, get successful and you, you play against good players and surround yourself with good players and then you pick up you pick up the good habits you pick up the good shots and as, as we discussed earlier the strategy and it, it all comes together and the best thing in the world in eight ball is when you're out there in a pressure match especially later on in a tournament and your, your heart's pumping and you you know you're alive when you when you're about to win a grand final or a semi-final and get into a national championship winning position. Well, I'm assuming the first one's the hardest. As you said, being, a, being an experienced champion certainly helps the next time around. Oh, it does. It's, um, well, they say that you've got you to lose one before you win one, and I certainly did that. I, Really? Yeah, I lost to uh, Sean Budd in 1999 at, at the uh, Melbourne Casino at the Palladium Room. Very, very spectacular location. Nice venue. Oh, beautiful. I've never felt so proud to lose. It's, it's pretty hard to beat Sean in a casino at anything. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I did go into the final with a lot of confidence because I, I, I was the only player to beat him in the, in the round, rounds leading up to the final. But uh, Sean quickly snubbed that confidence right out of me and put me away quite easily, 6-2 on that occasion. Really? I'm surprised at that score level. Although once Sean gets going, it's <laughs> it can be a little in, in, immaterial. Well, uh, very good player, as, we, as we've said. Certainly a legend of Q Sports in this country. I actually had the pleasure of beating Sean recently. <laughs> Much to his surprise. Well, no, in short, I, did, I did break and put out. <laughs> it oh. didn't really matter who was playing, but he was as surprised as I was. Uh, that's one good thing about Sean. Look, it's, it's easy to be a good winner, but he is a very, very good loser also. On yeah. the rare occasion he does lose. That's correct. Now, back to our final. I've said it before, but Rusty is in a lot of trouble. I think he's going to try for the Hail Mary on this occasion. Oh, you think he's going to go off two cushions and try and put the other red? He needs... Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that shot's probably not on. He's going to try something... Pe 
peculiar here. Do you believe sometimes it's worth actually going for that? Can't oh. say anything else. Pete's obviously got his balls all all over the place nicely and he really had nothing to lose to have a go there. This could be his last shot, Kim. He's playing that with extreme side. So he played that shot to just make sure he caught the edge of the ball. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's, he has played it very nicely. <laughs> very difficult shot here. But he's really got no alternative but to try and just run this along the cushion. does have a few issues in that top pocket. You see him actually going for a snooker. Oh, he's, he's holding all the aces here. He can do whatever he likes. He can have a crack. He can pull a snooker. There's really no risk. It's a I'm assuming Rusty gives him two shots here. It's good night. Oh, if Rusty gives him one shot here, it's good night. He's peach freed the balls up. Everything's easy to pot. Rusty really has to pop this red here, otherwise it's, it's curtains. And he's, he's played a foul. He's, he's, he's caught the yellow ball with his cue on the way through. And now Pete's pres presented here with a, a pot out that's ABC in my opinion. Can't see much going wrong here. No. Still, they do say the two hardest frames to win are your first and your last. Gets oh. a little bit harder to let go of the cue. Once again, it's that easy. He's, he's, he's confused on how how to do it, but he's. Will you play this with a touch of side, or is he just going to run it in? Oh, looks like he's going to go the other way. Run it around a bit. Might want to take a little bit of time with his shot, and make sure he cues it well. Yeah, he might just bounce this off the back rail, and that's a good shot. Oh, I think we've got a champion, the 2010 Q Masters 8 Ball Open Championship, Mr. P. Right, well done. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Kim. It was a great match.